What's up guys, I'm Jeff, the founder of Worldwide Cyclery, and one of my favorite things about the bicycle industry is innovation, creativity, and progress. And you can absolutely use all of those words when you're talking about this product. So this is from a new company, Trust Performance. It is the message fork. It is a carbon linkage fork that costs $2,700, and it is phenomenal, and we're gonna talk about it today. So before we get into the specs and details of this fork, I wanted to talk about who is Trust Performance. The company obviously just came out onto the market and it's founded by some seriously big names. Hap Seliga, co-founder of Competitive Cyclist, Jason Shears, co-founder of Edge, which then became Envy, and most notably, Dave Weigel, which is an iconic suspension engineer in the mountain bike industry who's done Pivot, Ibis, Da Vinci, Evil, all sorts of amazing designs and Man, to me, I've always had Weigel on this huge pedestal, and I think everyone else has as just being like one of the most amazing suspension engineers ever in the mountain bike world that really pushed the industry forward. So when I saw those three names and this fork, I was like, this thing matters. I want to learn about it. Um, everyone in the shop looked and into it a lot and read a bunch of articles on it, and we're super stoked to actually get a chance to ride these things and play with them and test them out. So let's dive into this fork, the specs, and the details. So it's really hard to talk about this fork because it's nothing like a normal fork. So a lot of the specs that you're kind of used to hearing about like offset and travel and axle to crown are very different because this fork is just so different. So to get into a lot of those little nitty gritty things, please check the video description below. There's a link to a blog post where we go way more in depth on all of those little details and specs. I'm gonna keep it a bit high level here and mostly talk about how this thing actually works on the trail. But it has a 130 mil travel wheel path, which equates to 120 mil of linear travel. Linear travel is what a traditional fork has, also known as a telescopic fork. Um, this thing weighs about 2000 grams, which is similar to a Fox 30 six uh, they have only one model right now and it does fit a 29 a 27.5 plus and a 27.5 in different travel ranges again check the blog post to learn a little more about that and i'm going to talk later about the different wheel travel bikes we put it on and how it felt on them um, axle to crown similar to 130 mil travel bike and what you've been waiting for here it is So these forks out of the box come with a setup guide and an owner's guide. And that is very useful because you do set them up a bit differently than a traditional fork, as you would imagine. It's not all that hard though. It does have two air valves. So you've got an air valve right here, an air valve right there. They do need to have matching PSI. You have a single rebound adjustment. You have your two low speed compression adjustments right here. Um, open, medium, firm adjuster right there. So nothing too crazy in terms of like untraditional things that you're not used to but you do need to set it up to trust specifications. At least that's what I highly recommend. Um, they basically detailed, depending on your body weight and your riding style, exactly how to set this thing up in the setup guide. And again, it's nice and easy to follow. So if you have one of these, do that. Um, we actually have one of these forks available for demo and purchase in our California and Pennsylvania location. So if you happen to be near one of our shops, you can come on in and we can get you set up on one of these things so you can try it out. And that brings me to the first warning about this fork. Do not parking lot test it. It feels very weird in a parking lot test, and I will dive into that in a little bit so we can actually talk about how this thing works. So I'll give you guys my experience with this fork. When we first got it in, uh, Liam, our head mechanic, set it up, put it on one of our demo bikes, and immediately I walked over when it was set up, I pushed down the handlebars and I was like, what? This feels awful. What did you do? Is the low speed compression too high? Like this feels horrible. And he's like, he's like, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Like I set it up exactly as Emmanuel said, him and I both rode it around. Um, it was weird. It was very weird feeling. Like you push down on it and it just doesn't really feel right. It felt like it was way too stiff. Um, we kind of rode it off some stairs behind the shop, ran into some curbs and it was funky. It felt very weird. It was stiff, but it also like eight bumps up. 
And it was just uh, it was a it was a mind trip how this thing worked. And uh, then we contacted Trust and we're like, hey, we want to talk to you guys more about this so we can better understand how this thing works because it feels very weird. Um, we we hopped on the phone with Jason Shears, one of the one of the co-founders of Trust, and he talked to us a lot about the fork and how it is so different because. This thing, as you can tell how different it looks, it operates very differently and you really do need to have like a mindset shift on how you think about a fork and how it should feel. One of the most surprising things that he told us is he said, look, it does feel horrible when you just push down on it just straight on the bars. It's not supposed to feel good there. Um, that's part of the engineering behind the thing. That's why I said a huge warning, do not parking lot test this fork. Because if you just hop on a bike on flat ground and bounce up and down and push on the fork, it feels like crazy stiff and rigid and not like you would expect a fork to feel like. Um, but here's the weird thing that he told us to do. He said, put the wheel against a wall and push down on the handlebars. And when you do that, it is buttery smooth and plush, like more smooth and plush than any fork you've ever felt. And the reason that is, is because the way this is designed, bumps that are coming forward at the fork, those are the bumps that it just eats up. And he actually did tell us um, a trick that you can do, which is put this thing on your bike, pedal up to speed, take your hands off, and slam into a curb. Um, I didn't have the balls to do it, but uh, our guy Logan Mullally, who loves this fork, he had the balls to do it, and he did it, and it worked. I believe I can fly. I believe I can... Um, it's unbelievable how much it just eats bumps when you run straight into them. Um, but that's where it does get weird, right? Because when you're in a rock garden, you're going forward, most all the bumps you're gonna hit on the trail are coming at you, right? They're just, they're, whether they're G-outs or rocks, they're coming at the wheel and this thing just eats them up. But when you're pedaling and when you're pumping into a corner or you're pumping into a G-out, that's where the fork feels stiff and it transfers energy. And Right off the bat, if it's like it's kind of weird to get used to, but once you get used to it, and once you like sort of be open-minded to the thing, you kind of fall in love with it. And that's what happened to me. I rode around the parking lot. I was like, "Whoa, this is like too crazy. We got to learn more about how this is supposed to work." We talked to Jason, 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 Jason. We better understood it. Um, then we got out on the trail, and immediately. Oh, I, I was totally impressed. And uh, a couple of people's opinions here that I really respect, Liam Woods, our head mechanic in California, and Logan Mullally, both phenomenal riders. Um, those guys fell in love with it as well, especially Logan, and he's like very nitpicky about everything and such a suspension nerd and bike nerd in general. And to see him like have a glowing review and smile on his face after riding this thing on the trail for the first time, I was like, gotta spend more time on it. Um, when I spent more time on it, same exact thing. It's crazy. The way the offset works, the way it tracks the ground, the way uh, the head angle doesn't change as you compress. I mean, it's so different. You really have to change the way you think about how a fork should work. And once you sort of get into that mindset shift, um, man, it's amazing. I, I was shocked and impressed and absolutely in love with this thing. It is super different. So do not parking lot test it test it on the trail. Um, man, th th those are the things I can really highly advise. The other thing that's interesting, I only got to spend time on it on an Evil to Falling, which is a 120 mil travel bike. Um, Liam spent time on it on the offering. To me, um, the way it feels stiff when you push down on it and when you pump and all of that sort of stuff, you do notice that when you're climbing and when you're riding the bike. And I could imagine if it was on a longer travel bike, it might feel weird because you have so much plush rear suspension and your front end feels stiff um, when you're pumping, right? That's not gonna happen when you're running over bumps because then it's where this thing shines the most. The other weird thing where that sort of, um, I don't know what you could call it, sort of like handlebar push down really feels weird on this fork is that slap down effect. Slap to BS. Right, so like if you go off a drop um, or even off like a three stair or five stair and you sort of land back wheel for first and you slap your front end down, it's pretty stiff, um, much more than a traditional fork is. And that can kind of feel weird at first. It's not like so stiff that you're like, oh my God, it's gonna break my wrist or it doesn't work. Like it still moves, um, but it's stiffer right there. So that is one sort of negative that I would say towards that stiffness feeling, but that stiffness feeling is sort of exactly what you want when you pump into a corner um, or push into a G out or when you're climbing and you don't want the thing to bob. So very unique feeling fork and I'm gonna bring in Liam real quick so he can tell you a little bit about his experience on the fork. Do you trust the message? 
<laughs> I do trust the message. It is a very interesting fork. Um, it works completely different from any other fork I've ridden. Obviously, it looks extremely different. Um, the most interesting thing I felt was front wheel tracking and traction. It was so improved over a normal fork that it totally made it, the ride, the trail, everything feel different, especially in the front end. Yeah, and that's a hard thing to sort of explain like front wheel tracking and traction, but kind of what you get when you ride this thing is where you point the wheel, it just sticks and goes there. It almost feels like you're on sort of a monster truck and wherever you point that front wheel, it just goes that way and like gives your bike stability and control that you're not used to. You feel the same way, right? Yeah, and I, and I think also at first, it almost feels it's slightly like twitchy. Uh, yeah. Because it, it is so stiff yeah, and everything totally. just is tracking exactly where you point it. Yeah, it is stiff. It's way stiffer than a traditional fork and just laterally and just the way when you're turning the bars, like you can notice the stiffness. But in my opinion, it feels good like that. Like it works good. That stiffness is nice. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the difference when you had it on the following versus the offering. So following is 120 mil travel evil. Uh, the offering is 140 mil travel evil. Yeah, so the following um, 120 rear, and you compare it with the 120 to 140 fork, and I think this is really where it feels at home. Um, it has 120 mil of linear travel, 130 mil of uh, wheel path, so it matches right up with the following, yep. um, and it, it feels even front to rear. Now, when I put it on my offering, which is 140 rear with the 140 to 160 fork, um, it felt like the rear end was moving more than the fork, especially in those um, yeah, compressions. Like the hits. Yeah, yeah, totally. Those compressions, those G outs, pumping. Um, the rear end's way more plush, moving way more. And it, and it also, actually, the crown is slightly shorter um, than the fork's running on the offering. So it does drop the bottom bracket. Um, head tube angle doesn't matter as much, but it, it puts your weight more over the front end. So you're kind of differently balanced than you'd be used to on that bike as well. Yeah, so pay attention to that. So this thing has an axle to crown that's really similar to a traditional fork at 130 mil travel. So if your bike is engineered around 130 mil travel, this thing will slap right on. If your bike is engineered around something that's 140 mil travel or 150, kind of like the offering, you're gonna wanna do something in terms of um, spacers or maybe adjust your stem spacers so your handlebar height is similar to what you're used to so it doesn't sort of throw off that feel. Yeah, one thing Trust did say is if you are adjusting um, axle crown height, whether you're adding or decreasing that, um, keep your handlebar height the same. So if you're decreasing it, increase your stack by 20 mil, and put 20 mil spacers under your stem. Yeah, perfect. So. Yeah, that makes a huge difference for sure. Yeah, and one of the things that was impressive about this fork to me was, man, just that overall feel once you got used to it. It does take a little getting used to, and probably same with you, right? How long did it take you to ride it before you really realized, like, oh, this thing's pretty um, impressive? I'd say, like, a full day of riding. Like, a full, full day, day, like, different trails, you know, three hours on the bike yeah. before I was, like, not only used to it, but also, like, impressed. Um, and then you get used to it, the big difference is hopping on a traditional fork. Yeah, totally. Once you go hop on a traditional fork, that. yeah, you you know, handling's different, it feels different, so yeah. that's that's where you really notice it. Yep, I agree. Yeah, I think spending some time on the fork makes a big difference, and so you guys can check this out. Here's some riding footage of ourselves and Logan Malali shredding on this thing. So pros and cons for this thing. I think right off the bat, pros, performance. It just works really damn well. It's super fun to ride. And like I said, uh, probably a hundred times by now, you do have to make a bit of a mindset shift and be open-minded because it does work very different than a traditional fork. 
but it works amazing. Once you get used to it, once you spend some time with it, it just is incredible. Like the small bump absorption it has, how much it makes your bike track and stick to the ground and give you additional front wheel traction is amazing. So to me, that's the number one pro for this thing. Um, probably next up is Cool Factor. So it's a $2,700 fully carbon fork and uh, your buddies probably don't have one. So there's some Cool Factor there. The other pro, look, it looks pretty damn cool. That's also a con because it's polarizing, right? You may be thinking this thing looks hideous or you may be thinking, wow, that looks really cool and innovative. Um, that's what the polarizing look is. So that is a pro and a con. Um, diving into cons, first thing I'm probably gonna get the most comments for in this video, price, $2,700 not really cheap, not really that affordable for most people and probably more expensive than a lot of people's entire bicycles. So uh, that's kind of a con. Size variance, it's not available in too many different size variants for you know, sort of like a cross country bike or a long travel bike or a downhill bike, like those are kind of wiped off the table. This is a little bit more trail slash enduro-y bikes right now. Um, so size variance would be a con right there. Um, it's a touch heavy, so it's 2,000 grams, which is similar to a 36. In travel range, it's probably gonna be more likely to be put on a bike that would traditionally run something like a Fox 34 or a RockShox Pike, and it's a touch heavy for that. Um, not a ton, but a touch. The other con is it is carbon. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. So originally when we filmed this, I had put the fact that this thing is carbon as a con. But the more I thought about it, maybe it's not a con and it's actually a pro. Initially I thought if you hit this thing on a rock, you could potentially destroy the thing. But then if you look at it compared to a traditional fork, traditional fork you have an exposed stanchion. If you even so gently even scratch an exposed stanchion on a traditional fork, you may or may not be able to repair it and then you're gonna need an entire CSU upper portion of your fork to repair, um, which is very pricey. Whereas this thing, if you scratched it basically anywhere, you don't need to replace it. Um, carbon these days can take some crazy impacts just like carbon rims, carbon frames, um, carbon cranks, carbon bars. So I don't really think it is a con. The more that I thought about it and the more I thought about the advantages of not having an exposed stanchion where if you crash, you scratch your stanchion, you're screwed. This thing, you crash, you, you scratch it up. Yeah, you're gonna be bummed because you just scratched your really nice fork, um, but you're not gonna need to replace an entire CSU. So um, maybe that's not a con and maybe it's a pro. And at this price point, you should expect this to be made out of carbon and get all the advantages that comes with carbon like stiffness and looks and all of that. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention in the pro section was the service intervals. So all of the bearings in this fork have a lifetime warranty and the damper service interval is nearly triple a traditional fork. It's at 250 hours. So Couple interesting little things there that I wanted to add to this video a couple weeks after we filmed it. Um, that's about it for pros and cons. I mean, I'm definitely impressed with this thing. It's unique, it's interesting, it's innovative, and it works really damn well. Well, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to leave an answer in the comments to the question, if cost was not a factor, would you put this thing on your mountain bike? For me, I probably would. It's, it's pretty darn fun to ride and it, it's innovative, it's different, it's unique. It actually won Pink Bikes Innovation of the Year for 2018. And one of the funniest things about that to me, if you go to Pink Bike and you look at that Innovation of the Year award, the top comment, I have a feeling that if anyone other than Dave Weagle brought this to market, it would be shunned just like all the other linkage forks. Pretty interesting, but probably pretty true. Dave Weagle has got such a name that carries so much weight in terms of mountain bike innovation and prowess that when he comes to market with a linkage fork, People care, people wanna know, people make YouTube videos about it, people talk about it. Speaking of that, make sure to share this video with all of your mountain bike buddies, especially the ones who have a bank account that looks like a phone number, because they might be interested in this fork. Check out our other videos, share, subscribe. See you guys in the next one.